Hello everybody, welcome to the Bitsy tutorial on how to create Heroes Awakening. Today we're going to be exploring how to create a game and use the tool sets that Bitsy Engine provides us with. Before we start anything, let's first explore what a Bitsy game will look like. So you start off with a title and you can create a little dialogue scene that sets up the setting. As you can see, it's a 2D uh, old style game with low pixel art. You can walk between different rooms, uh, you can create little dialogue sections between the rooms to give you idea of what's happening. There will be sprites that you can interact with. For example, the strange triangle symbol. Uh, you can walk up to it and it will interact. You can see that there's different text in, uh, interactions that you can place upon it. You can also interact with sequenced items. For example, this one will have one dialogue section first and then another time it will have that second dialogue section. Because of the way it's set up, it will only have that second dialogue section for the rest of the game. Otherwise, you can actually have dialogue section set up like the second system, where it will say the first thing, it can say the second thing, it will say the third thing, and then it will loop back to the first one afterwards. And lastly, you can have shuffled dialogue systems where you walk into this, and it will say something randomly, and it will be said differently randomly. Uh, where all the dialogue systems will be set once until it reshuffles into a new random system. Let's continue to another room. As you can see, uh, Bitsy has cool transitions that allow you to move between different color schemes. Uh, we will attempt to open this door. We will find that it is locked and with it we can see that there's systems that allow you to keep track of inventory and use that to our advantage. And lastly, we will talk to this wizard who shows off one more text ability and we'll end the game. That's the game we're gonna be putting together for this project. So let's begin our journey. First, you will need to uh, go to bitsy.org to play the game and we'll click make game, which will open us to this window. You'll be greeted with a uh, number of windows that allow you to do different things. Let's go through them one by one. First, you have the Bitsy logo. Here is your game's title. You have two buttons on the side here. One will be tools. When you click it, it will bring down this uh, menu that shows up every room that is on and every room that's not on. And you have the play button to play test your game. First, you have the about section. We're not going to focus too much on that right now. And what we're going to focus on is this room. This is where your game exists. This is what uh, the levels will look like for you. Let's first start looking by this tab up here. Each window will have a tab similar to it. First thing you always see is the name of the item you're looking for. Right now we're looking at the example room. Then you'll have arrows that let you flip between different sections. Right now this is the only room that we have. You can click the plus button and it will create an empty room for you. Also click the delete button to get rid of that room. You can click the duplicate room and it will copy all the tiled elements without the characters. And lastly, you will have this find room, which pops up the find window. We'll explore that more in a moment. On the bottom here, you will find that there are several tabs that you can play around with. The major one is the edit. It breaks down into three different sections that you can do stuff with. First, you'll find the paint one. It will look at whatever currently is highlighted in your paint window. Right now, it's the avatar. And if you click on the room, it will create it. Uh, Bitsy works on an on-off system. So if you click on it again, he'll disappear. Uh, we'll talk more about the avatar in a moment. Next, you have the pick ability. If you click on it, it will pick and copy the tire you just selected. It'll bring it up in the paint window and you can click and draw it using the paint feature again. Lastly, there's endings, but we will focus that in a moment. Next tab in this section is the colors. Right here, you can see the color window. Right now we have the blueprint uh, color scheme set up. Bitsy works on a three color system. So you have a background color, a tile color and a sprite color. If I, for example, change the sprite color, it will be red and you'll be able to create more color schemes uh, using the plus button and then switch them in here. We will do that for our game. Next, you have the tune section where you can actually turn off different music 
and the avatar. This will control what your avatar looks like in the current scene. Let's go over the different paint sections. You will start off with your avatar. The avatar is the player's character. There can only be one inside your game. It doesn't matter how many rooms you have, whatever room that avatar is placed in, that will be the room that the player starts in. Next, we have tiles. Tiles can be uh, used as many times as you can, as you see in this example room. Tiles have a special ability. They have this toggle button on, which makes them either a wall or a decoration. Right now, this little square is uh, toggled off, meaning that the player can step on top of it. However, if we create another object, such as this, if we toggle the object on as a wall and place it around the player and play test it, you will notice that the player cannot walk past it. However, they can walk on the original block. Next, we have sprites. We're provided with a basic sprite in the game. It's a cat. The cat, as you will notice, has more options than a title or avatar. The cat has a dialogue system that you can interact with and a sound effect that can be played on top of it. You can also click on here to select different dialogue systems that are selected or use this button to be brought to the dialogue window. Sprites, like the avatar, can only exist in one room in the world. If you place a cat anywhere else in any different room, they will be gone from the other one. So if you want a character that's reoccurring, you will have to create multiple instances of them with different dialogue settings. Lastly, let's talk about items. Items work similarly to sprites. When you walk into them, they will play a dialogue system and a noise if you'd like. However, they are connected to the inventory system of Bitsy. Right here, you can see that we are initially provided with two different items, a T and a key. The inventory is zero for both of them, meaning the player has collected zero. But if we play test it, you can see that when the player walks over the teacup, a dialogue pops up and the number in the inventory system has gone up. This is how we use the door. We checked if the key was bigger or equal to one and then it allowed the player to move to a different room. You will also see that there's a variable system. You can do anything you want with. So these are not connected to items. This could be how many times the player has clicked the step button or has walked between rooms. It's a bit more in depth, but it is also available to you. But before we make any games, uh, it is important to have a good tool set of art. Uh, creating art by hand for this project would take too long. So we will use the Forest Zone Bitsy Tile Pack by Adam Ledox, which is the creator of the Bitsy engine. You can click a download here, and then once you have the download file, you'll be able to go back to Bitsy, open the download folder, and then upload the HTML file that you downloaded. In this case, it's the Forest Zone tile set. Once you have it uploaded, your game scene should look like this. Once we're on the screen, you will notice all the active elements that you can uh, play with now. You will see that there are two example rooms provided to us to see how we can use this tool set. And we're gonna start working on our own. So let's click the plus button and create our very first room. We're gonna call it cave. And using the find window, uh, we're gonna look for rocks. Uh, as you can see, there are rocks here. It'll bring up the paint tool and you can check each section for what it is. This is specifically a tile. And then, Make sure you're set on the paint tool and draw yourself some kind of cave. Create an exit point that you want your player to move between. I set it at the top of the screen, but you can make it anywhere you'd like. And just draw a shape. You can also use mushrooms. As you notice, the mushrooms are walls and you can use some dirt to make the cave feel more like a cave. You will notice that the color of the level is not as it was in our example. So let's create a new color set. You can use any colors, but I will use the ones used in the example. So first we have black, brown, and lastly we have yellow. Let's call it cave and go into our 
room's color and change it from deep forest to cave. That looks a bit more familiar. Now we're going to place our protagonist in the cave somewhere here. You can customize him to look like whatever you'd like. I like to give him a little hat. And we can play test our level. First thing you will notice is that the text is strange. It says forest tone tile zone. We don't want that. And if you walk around, nothing happens at the end. We will work on all of that momentarily. First, let's tackle the title. You can actually change the title in here, or if we open up the dialog window, you will if you click on the dialogue, you will notice that it pops up with more information. Here I'm going to change it to Heroes Awakening. You can also do other things. You can insert images. For example, I can insert this character. And if I click this, a uh, code will pop up saying that it was drawn. Another neat thing we can do is expand on the dialogue system. So after the title of the game is shown, we want to create a dialogue page break. This will separate the two texts that we want to show and we will create another dialogue, which we will type in a description of what's happening. Let's take a look at the results of our work with the dialogue system. If we click play, you will see that the hero's awakening with little doodle of our character is there. And if we click space or any other key, you will have a description of the room. However, we still can't move between rooms and that's what we're gonna tackle next. Before we create a transition between rooms, we need to have a second room. So let's click the plus button and create our cave two. The color system, as you can see, goes back to the deep forest. So we will change it back to cave and we will use the find window to create another set of rocks. Uh, we're going to create two openings. I'm going to put one on the top and the bottom. I'm also going to use the ladder tile in this level to create a path for the player to follow to the next room. Now that we have a second room for our player to move between, we can click the exit and endings window. As you can see, it's empty. We're going to click the plus button and we're going to create an exit. This allows the player to move back and forth between the rooms. One way exit will only allow you to move forward and the ending will end the game. So let's create an exit. As you can see, it shows you two rooms. These coordinates right here are where the player will uh, have to step on to leave and where they will appear. If we click on this pencil, we will have more uh, control over the editing of the placement. And we can click on this little sundial to give transition options. We're gonna do that for both. And the first thing we wanna do is set the rooms. So our first room is gonna be cave, and our second room is gonna be cave two. The coordinates in Bitsy work from zero, zero to 15 by 15. If you go to the top left, you will see that that's the zero, zero coordinate. And the bottom one is 15, 15. If we click on the room, it will be automatically teleported and we can adjust it by either clicking here and you can move it physically like this, or you can adjust them uh, using the dials here. We're gonna place this one here and then we're gonna go to this room and we're gonna move this one here. Now that we have the placements, we can add some transitional effects when we're going from the first room to the second room, we want it to slide up and we want to add some text. We can say, and for the backwards, we can have it slide down and add some text. Now let's click the play button and test out our game. Now that we have a transition between the two rooms, let's create some objects that we can interact with in this room. Let's open up the paint section and go to sprites. We can use this cat as an example. Make sure you go back to the paint mode and then place the cat. Inside this cat, we can animate him. So if we go in here, you will see that Bitsy operates on two frame animations. So the first frame is gonna look like this and the second frame we can add it to look like something else. Let's just make him whack his tail. Oops. So now you can see that the cat is happy and it's wagging his tail. Next, let's dive deeper into the dialogue system. When we click on this, we can see that there are several effects that can be placed on top of the cat's conversation. 
if we highlight it and place one of these, so there's wavy, shaking, and rainbow, you can choose uh, to make it act differently in the game. Let's test out the different abilities. We're gonna use each word as an example. So first, I'm is gonna be covered by wavy, so the I'm letters are gonna wave. We're gonna make this N, and it's gonna shake, and the cat's gonna be rainbowy. Alongside all of that, you can also choose what color the text should be for this conversation. Let's test it out. As you can see, each word that we created has a different effect on it, and you can use them in conjunction in one text box. Next, let's create some new objects that can use the different sequencing dialogue systems we showed off in the game. I'm gonna create a special mushroom, and we're gonna click on the dialog to jump to that dialog system. As you can see, it's empty right now and we can do whatever we want with it. We're gonna click add and we're gonna go to the lists. These are different types of conversations that NPCs can have. We're gonna start with sequence. Sequence means that it will go through each section as provided and then we'll always go to the last one as said. So like in the example, we're gonna say this and we're gonna have the second one say we can also click on here and you will see that there's an add option. This will allow you to extend the amount of dialogues that the character will provide. I'm gonna place this mushroom here and let's create another one. I'm gonna make a sword and I'm gonna jump to the dialogue section for that. This time we're gonna add a list of cycling. This will cycle through all the text given to the player in order. So the first one will happen first, second one second, third and third, and once it's done, it will go back to the first one. So I'll give this sword these three dialogue texts to cycle through, and we'll place it in the world. We're gonna create a third object, which I'm gonna call a ring. We're gonna click dialogue, and we're gonna go through the last sequence. The shuffle list creates several dialogue options that will be randomly chosen, until all options have been displayed. Once the list has been used, it will reset the order and randomly select words again. We're gonna have these two options and we're gonna place the ring in the world. Let's test out our sprites. As you can see, the sword has a cycle, which repeated to the first one. Next, we're gonna check out the ring. As you can see, it randomly chose the second one first, then the first one, and then the first one randomly again. And lastly, we're gonna look at the mushroom. And as you can see, once the conversation is done, it stays on the last topic. Now that we finished our second room, let's create our third one. We're gonna create an outdoors area for the player to explore. This time we're gonna keep the color scheme as was, and we're gonna use some new tiles. Let's start with some trees. Let's create a moon. As you can see with this, you may not be able to create giant images in the paint editor. However, if you create several tiles and line them up together, you will be able to create one big image, such as the moon. Next, let's place some stars, some clouds, maybe a bird. And let's build ourselves a house. We're gonna create walls and a roof. This is our level. As you may have noticed, the moon, the bird, and the stars are a different color than the trees. Normally, they should be purple. However, if you look inside the game data, inside the game data, you will see everything that makes up the game. These rooms tell you what they're made of, and these are the tiles. Each tile has information about it, if it's a wall, what, what its name is, and so on. What we want to do is find the moon. 
Now that we have this tile of the moon, right here you can see moon 1, you can see that there's a section that says color. Let's change the color from the regular tile color to the sprite color. That's what allows it to look different. If you dig deeper into the files and online forums, you can find neat tricks like this to improve your game as well. Now let's create an exit towards this room. Let's start in our second cave and we're going to create a new exit. We're going to make this one way. We don't want the player to go back to the cave. And let's use our tools here to move around. So we're going to move this here and we're going to go to our new room and we're going to place this here. Uh, because this is a one-way room, the exit place does not have a star and therefore cannot have transitions. We will add a transition here, uh, which creates a wonderful effect when moving between two different colored rooms. Let's test it out. As you can see, the player has no way of going back to the room and we can progress our story. To transition from one room to the other, we will need to do some trickery. We will create a sprite that will be a door. Let's place the door in the house and let's open the dialog window. Here we're going to add a list that's a branching list. Here, here we are introduced to an if statement. This will check if some condition is true and it will display one text if it is, and another text if it's false. In the base case, it checks if the player has t that is equal to 1. It will be false, so this else statement would play out. What we want to do is check for a key. So we're going to change this to a key. We're going to check if the player has one or more keys. And if they do, we will say, otherwise, we will say, Let's place the player in this room so we can have an easy way to test this. As you can see, the player doesn't have any keys and therefore it displays the doors closed. For us to mitigate that, we will place a key inside the level. Let's test it one more time. The door is closed. However, if we pick up the key now, the door is open, but the player hasn't moved. Well, we'll have to do a bit more on that part to continue the game. Going back to the door sprite dialog system, we can open it up and we can add further instructions for the game. First, let's create a page break. This will stop the text once we perform another action. And now we're going to create a room action. You can exit and the game lock or unlock the exits. This, you can change the palette of the level or you can even change the way the avatar looks at the moment. We're going to create an exit. If you click on it, you'll be able to edit it. We will have to create a room to be able to do that. And lastly, we can do a item and variable change. This allows you to edit what your inventory is looking like. We want to say that the player has used the key in the process. So we can say decrease item count. And if we go in here, we can say key is equal to keys minus one. This means that the key will lower back to zero. Now to move our player to the final level, let's create our last room. Let's click the plus button and we're going to create an indoor room. Let's use a wall. Let's place a door. You can use up the floor to fill up the space. Some tables. And flowers. Now that we have this room created, we can go back to our doors dialog system and we can move him to outdoors. We can hover over and find out where we want to place it. For my case, it's 713. And we can add a transition. I'm going to use a tunnel. Let's test our game.
our last thing we're gonna do is create a final person that will end the game. I'm gonna make a wizard. Here's my wizard. And we're gonna open up the dialogue system for them. I'm gonna add a basic dialogue. I'm gonna add a page break. And I'm gonna create a room action ending the game. As you can see, this will stop the game. We can still add stuff after the game has ended. So I will add one more dialogue section. And my wizard's dialogue system will look something akin to this. Let's place our avatar at the beginning of the game again and run it one more time. And you have created your first Bitsy game. Now that you have your game, it would be best to share it with other people. Click the download button and click download your game. This will create an HTML file like the one we used to import the forest assets. Best place to display your game is at h.io. If you don't have an account, create one. Or if you do, go here and click the upload new project. You want to fill out some options like your title but more importantly, you will want to change the kind of project to an HTML one. Once you do that, you want to upload your file. Select your project. Given that you set it to be an HTML file, you should be able to have this toggle on, which allows players to play the game in your browser. Uh, you may also want to change the viewport dimensions for yourself and set the tags to Bitsy. So other Bitsy players can find them. Before you go off create your own games, I highly recommend you check out the Bitsy documentation, a tutorial series by Dan Cox on Bitsy 6, and another tutorial by Rob Duarte. All of them are great resources and I highly recommend you check them out. Everything I mentioned in this video will be provided with links below in the description.